Hi all, I thought we'd do a, <coughs> a live stream. Uh, so so we're here on, on live stream and um, if you've got any classic games, <coughs> if you go to chess games com and give me a game number. Um, so if we go to chess games com, uh, chess games com, uh, you know, we can find classic games. For example, the notable games section is often quite interesting of famous players like Anand's got a notable game against Lortia which someone mentioned last night and I was a bit knackered to to really appreciate it but I think it is a brilliant game so we can just grab PGN let's have a look at Anand Lortia to start off with so we'll stick it into uh, chess space let's forget um, I was going to look at another game earlier but this, this let's look at this one I think to start off with um, but um if you've got any favorite classical master games we'll look at those after but let's look at this one to start off with so i'll just put you your, your chat on the right uh and I, i'll just put an end game to start off with is that okay guys because uh, someone has been going on about this for quite a while so let's look at this an end game yeah okay can you see the chessboard this is an end against lord here credit suisse in 1997 Oh yeah, there's there's a period of ads, but then they stop, and then then you've got the live. Sorry about the ads. It's the free version, you know, of live stream. Otherwise, you have to pay thousands of dollars, I think, to live stream to avoid the ads. Okay, so um, let's look at this Anand game. Um, so here was White, and he kicked off with E4. So if you've got any favorite games, um, when you've got time during this presentation. Find your, your game number with chessgames.com and we can look at them after this if you find a favourite game. Uh, but let's present this. I'll try and look at this game first. So Anna against Lautier. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, so this is like a dead poet society but for chess not poetry. So you just want to find the most interesting games and we'll share them. Enjoy them. Yeah. Okay. So E takes D5 against the center counter gambit and he gains the traditional tempo against Lortier. So Lortier is a French GM. I think he's still kind of high ranked uh, French Grandmaster. So um, D4. So C6 and this often transposes you know when black plays C6 they can often put the bishop just simply on F5 play E6 and it's actually a very hard position to crack. So Nimzovich may have been slightly wrong when he wrote about tempo and he kind of disregarded this whole opening system. But um, I think there's an Australian Grandmaster, Ian Rogers, who rejuvenated this system and, and proved it could be very, very solid and useful as a transpositional device to solid variations of the Kara Khan. Uh, but here, Bishop C4, Bishop F5, and indeed not, not the pin. So Bishop F5, just the idea, get this solid kind of structure. And then the tempo, you know, the development lead isn't usually that significant if there isn't any clear exploitable targets. Uh, so knight e5 anyway, immediately hitting f7. And of course it can be guarded with e6 here. And that's that was actually what was played e6. Um, if you've got any questions or come and speak up at any time. It, the whole point of doing this um, interactively is interaction. So, you know, I, of course I could put this on YouTube and not... not um, ask for any comments during the video but if got any questions just 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 pose them they might be quite interesting as well and insightful uh, so g4 so very very aggressive stuff so white's trying to punish uh, black uh, by by playing you know maybe for g5 maybe taking on g6 to double the pawns uh, so bishop g g6 h4 and now you see if h6 or h5 then knight g6 is pretty painful to have to capture away from the center that would be kind of annoying I think this is one of the main lines of attack for white in this system um, oh I think wiki is much better than me for Joe Lautier um, do you want to switch to wiki first just to get up some background uh, wiki's got everything ready um, what should we do that after let's just focus on the game since we've got that in front of us um, so knight d7 okay so knight takes d7 that's interesting uh, so e5 is being challenged also with the queen so something has to be done now many of us might consider a move like queen e2 i suppose 
the f4 looks dreadfully weakening so taking on d7 seems okay okay so knight takes d7 um, please also make sure it's not a game I've already video annotated on on YouTube com Kings Crush I'd like to have some games not already done before that'd be great ideally so h5 where is this bishop going is it trapped it looks to have a problem but they can use this square because this knight's pinned at the moment so it seems bishop e4 is going to be virtually forced okay attacking the rook so have we all had this position before this is actually quite theoretical and sharp against the center counter to try and get an advantage from the opening so rook h3 that's kind of nifty instead of rook g1 rook h3 so that implies maybe rook e3 later and some pressure on e6 okay so bishop g2 strange looking move uh, black is doesn't seem to be concerned about development at the moment it's just hitting the rook with this bishop again so rook e3 there seems to be some direct pressure building up on e6 um, but now it's it's solid enough so that wasn't the idea uh, the idea of this rook is very interesting is white going to try and play queen e2 and then maybe f3 to try and trap the bishop if this bishop doesn't go to d5 soon or maybe you'd expect a c5 move but c5 is inhibited by d5 using that pin on the e6 pawn so knight d5 f3 here wow so f3 already surprised uh, so the bishop is being trapped here stopped from going to d5 temporary uh, rook sack exchange sack uh, so bishop b4 instead of taking the rook there's pressure on c3 so it's gone very very tactical very very quickly king f2 so just trying to get more material now just materialistic trying to munch that bishop takes queen takes hitting the rook okay very very sharp position is the rook gonna move yes and if black castles of course it will be a disaster with bishop takes h7 in variations like that if castles queenside then rook takes b7 i expect you know takes bishop a6 check so this queen is basically a tactical target at the moment um this bishop's kind of trapped so what's black going to do he takes okay he just takes on d4 that's safe enough it seems so rook takes b7 rook d8 and it seems is white in trouble if he does take with the king then there's knight takes e3 and, and then queen takes e3 um so it's it's a tactical uh, position h6 in the light of all this h6 okay provoking some weaknesses maybe and this is the total stunner of the game it's a queen sack it's shocking this is why it's been mentioned a few times by someone quite persistent in me having a look at this game so shocking queen sack i don't know how many of you would have considered this it is discovering an attack against the queen but i think it requires some precise calculation so what on earth is going on here okay what did black do is he worried about uh, taking the queen because maybe bishop takes f7 is the start of a journey he doesn't want to do with his king king f8 bishop a3 check king g7 then you can imagine something like bishop h5 and that would be check and then i don't know can't calculate it myself beyond there let's let's stick this into an engine actually black played knight e7 but let's check now what's going on here so we'll add a kibitzer um this ribka underneath and um i hope this will be clear this engine analysis at the bottom uh, we don't need the diagram um we don't need the variation board okay so if queen takes was this actually sound let's have a look it's actually a mate in four and it's not even to do with bishop takes f7 that's quite incredible bishop takes f7 i think this is an incorrect mate in 129 <laughs> i i don't think that's serious uh so in this position it seems the winning move is actually to exploit the pin on the f7 pawn with rook takes e6 wow 
So let's follow that through. Rook takes e6. Actually, can we just click on that? No, we can't. So knight e7, say. Take king f8, and then bishop takes h6 will be mate. Mating. Because, sorry, king g8, and now bishop takes f7. Blimey. That wasn't, to be honest, this was hidden to me. Uh, this this line, I just imagined when looking at it without an engine, that it was actually something more directly to do with simply um, bishop takes f7 check. I didn't even spot rook takes e6. Because it's already a surprise shocking move to, to, to leave your queen in pre. But to sort of do it for a pin on f7, that's, that's staggering that rook e6 is introduced here with such a crushing um, decisive effect. So rook takes e6. Um, what what did we look at here? We looked at um, ninety seven. And if king f eight, same sort of thing, I guess. Check, and then check is mate. Bishop takes f seven, mate. So that's quite pretty, isn't it? This 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 temporary queen sack. Um, so black actually um, after after this he he must have seen uh, rook takes e six. Okay. So, um, what did black do? Knight e7. Oh dear. Harp. Someone. Not, I doubt it's harp being. Um, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's get back to this. So, knight e7. Um, <clears throat> okay. What happened here? What did white do? He plays just queen takes queen, rook takes. Now actually these rooks are on a skewering line here, aren't they? They're on a skewering line. Um, is white going to use that or something else? He can still use rook takes e6. There's a pin on f7. He can still use rook e6 to gang up on e7 as well. So there's two tactical ideas, but I think probably rook e6 looks more direct. Just rook d3. Shocking. So you might wonder what on earth is going on here? Why didn't he play rook e6? Maybe he's just content to get the bishop back because look, this bishop's just going to be trapped still with this carnivorous like king soon. Um, so two bishops and a rook against two pieces and a rook. About equal, but the bishop is diabolically placed. So uh, black played rook d8 not wanting to do that check and the bishop just retreats back so leaving the king really to do the job of winning material here the rook's still on the seventh white's got the two bishops all in all it doesn't look like a very pleasant position for black now this rook's still at home not developed and here black actually resigned so that was actually a stunning game uh, wouldn't you say just from the opening as well so maybe Nimzovich was right after all about the importance of tempo and he really ran down this whole opening system in my system in his very first chapter about not losing time and as though we're in a race. But um, the, the system itself gains a good reputation as I say I think in particular from the Australian Grandmaster Ian Rogers who used to play this with Bishop F5 and it was considered you know quite solid. But this Knight E5 is probably the most critical line against this whole Bishop F5 just to get this g4, this h4, to really panic black about crippling the structure. Uh, so we have here after e6, g4. So this is a fantastic game maybe to try and knock out a higher rated opponent at some point who, who's playing this um, provocative, you know, you know, tempo losing system, the center counter. So h4, knight d7. I think the instructive thing here is not bother reinforcing your knight. Uh, you just you you let black seemingly off the hook. You play knight takes d7, and then the beautiful rook swing in this game, after h5 and then rook h3, creates actually very good opportunities for white. This this pin this pressure on e6. It seems to create lots of opportunities. Black of course didn't do very well with his bishop on g2, from the evidence of this game. Um, 
Mm. Well, it's a counterattack in the centre straight away. So f3. So starting the the tactics start after f3. Really, is the king really going to be carnivorous? Um, so queen takes d4, rook takes b7. It's always dangerous having a rook on the seventh. Um, and now we get this brilliant um, move coming up. So the other question uh, one might ask: this h6 move could could actually bishop g6. It didn't really do anything there, did it? Bishop g6. It was just outright losing here. So h6 really ruptured actually this this diagonal. Would you say h6 ruptured that diagonal? Because here, if we check, this this is harmless, isn't it? Check, and there's nothing. There's, bishop a a3 can be defended, can't it, with knight e7 or not? Uh, this this would get tricky, wouldn't it? Because because otherwise. There might be something on the cards. This doesn't look too convincing, this position. Although it still looks dangerous. Um, in fact, let, let's go back here. Sorry, in this position, bishop g6. Let's get an engine view of bishop g6 here without the h6, just out of interest. So black's better with queen takes d1. So the check, so the bishop a3, knight e7, check. Black's crawling out apparently. So Bishop G five what was the defence? Just rook d seven. Okay, the defence was rook d seven. Um so after the, so black white's best would have been here takes. So it's it's all made completely different by this prelude, this h six basically. So what did h six do technically? It kind of ruptured this diagonal, thus making this bishop more effective when it hit h six. It's caused the rupture. So bishop g6 is a lot more effective. It actually works really well because of this rook e6 and this bishop h6 coming up. Would you all agree on that? The the preliminary h6 uh, makes the whole thing a lot more effective, the tactic. And it's beautiful that it's actually not even about bishop f7, but the more subtle rook takes e6. So just giving up the queen on d1 and it wasn't taken. But it leaves white with, a, with an easily won position now. After the queen's come off, and simply, and then can simply aim to munch the bishop on g2. So that is, I think, a great game. Uh, I hope you guys thought that was a great game. All right, let's stop the video there and save one game at a time and move on to another one. Okay. One moment. I'll I'll be back. I'll just save it now.